Hi and welcome to my video about how to make a Dutch gable uh, roof which is mixed in with um, a nested gable uh, over a sunroom. The idea is to build a, a shaded deck area right there as you can see and it's a covered ceiling but there's a vaulting up in there and um, <clears throat> that front room is called the sunroom and I don't have any windows on the house but I'm going to show you how I build the roof and it's going to end up looking like this, but um, the idea is to come up with that, that little wedge right there that fits into the roof. Now, I'm narrating over a, a, a high-speed version of this. This is a two, two x right here. We're going to go to 4x right now. The idea is to kind of get you through this faster um, <clears throat> and uh, allow me to think offline, build this, because it's a pretty compla complex uh, modeling exercise and I'm I'm actually fairly new to uh, SketchUp so what I'm doing is building the attic walls right now I'm using the move command to duplicate the attic wall and uh, I'm gonna build all three attic walls uh, I'm using a 6 and 12 pitch roof on this with a 6 inch thick wall I'm using the push-pull tool there to make the walls fairly thick those attic walls are not particularly important, but now um, the important part comes, and I'm afraid I made this a little bit small, but <clears throat> you'll get the idea once it fills in. I'm building the profile of the roof with a um, with a soffit and all that, and it's a, a nine-inch roof. So I build that one side, and then I duplicate that and flip it around so that I have the other side. Now I'm going to do a similar thing with the tape measure tool, uh, getting my proper offsets <clears throat> of a 9-inch thick roof. And I build the profile, and I use the push-pull tool to create that little section of roof. And then I use the rotate tool to spin it around and copy it <clears throat> at the same time using the option key. So now I've got a full gable roof. I'm going to um, merge these two sections of roof so that it's just one. And I explode the two groups and then uh, regroup it. And then I uh, hide everything else so that I can delete the extraneous lines there. At this stage I'm pulling forward a section of the uh, gable roof so that I've got a little bit of an overhang, a one foot overhang uh, on both the, on all uh, ends of the gable roof. Do that on the, did I do it on the back? I think so. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it's a material on the back. I get the uh, gable roof overhangs correct. Looks like I did it again. Had a little problem there. Now I'm going to do it on the back. As I said, it's immaterial on the back. It's just sort of for completeness. Um, and you can see the overlaps there and, and everything. Um, I use each section of, of roof in its own group. Otherwise, you, you get into a nightmare scenario where things get connected. What I am doing here is I use the intersect with model command to uh, locate the, um, the cut points in that section of, of the roof, that little section of, of gable there and uh, carve that out. I, I want to be as correct as I can in, in all of this modeling um, so that I can see what the end pieces look like. So there's the, the gable and everything's cool. Now I'm going to stretch out a, a, um, a path that I'm going to use for the follow me tool. And uh, I'm sticking, that's a 12 foot uh, wide deck area there. And so what I'm trying to do is find uh, the, pat, the point that's um, 12 feet away from the edge of the wall there so that I can have a 45 degree angle up to that line right there that I just drew. <clears throat> Once I've got that, then I can use that as a, uh, a new profile that I'm going to use with the Follow Me tool. And I'm drawing that profile right now using the old profile. And now I go into the Follow Me tool, and there it is. There's my Dutch gable. Uh, and it goes only over to the middle of that gable. I could have wrapped around, but then I would have to have cleaned up a little bit more. And you'll see what I mean here. So right now, I, I'm using, I'm doing intersect with model after triple clicking on all the elements in, 
in that group and I'm sort of iteratively uh, finding how to close the uh, I'm deleting sections and and which of course creates new openings in in the um, the edges and so I have to figure out how to close those edges it's a little bit of a, a brain teaser to figure out what the end result of this um, intersect with model is. Perhaps there's clever ways to do that, but I haven't learned it yet. And so the idea is to get rid of all the extraneous stuff and then try to figure out how to uh, close off the edges. And one, one technique I use is I just start making triangles so that I can see what I'm seeing and then I delete what appear to be extraneous edges. I don't fret over too much trying to get exactly the right one. I just will throw down some triangles and when I start to see it forming, taking shape, I'll, I'll uh, remove some of the extra lines. And you can see here I'm peeking inside the, the little overhang there and um, uh, so that I can make sure everything is good. Now I want to carve off uh, or split that, that gable roof there so that I don't put any roofing material um, on that part of the gable roof underneath the Dutch gable. Um, so that's really all I did there, and um, I think I'm just checking my... Oh, and in this uh, part, I try to remove this line. I ran into a little bit of trouble. Uh, not exactly sure uh, what all went wrong here. Probably had to do with selecting within groups and everything. But anyway, um, I, I do go about finding the line that I need to put there so that it looks correct and that that roof then isn't... It looks like one merged thing. Uh, not sure I was successful in the end with that. Um, I was in sort of a hurry trying to get this done so that this video wasn't too long. At this point, I'm covering the walls so that it makes a you know look, looks a little bit better. And I'm going to select the, the rooftops and put in some red metal roof, which is the only thing they had available. Uh, but at least it allows you to see what it looks like. And you can see up underneath uh, in the in there, I'm going to add in. Oh, I put a little tar paper on the on that part of the roof. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to add in uh, a ceiling here, which I use three quarter inch plywood, which you can't see, of course, because it goes up. But um, that way, I can put that into the ceiling um, layer, and now we can kind of play around with it and and see what the pieces look like. Here, I'm showing that it's very accurate modeling inside there and it's all really thanks to the follow me tool. I'm going to pull out the nose of this roof a little bit and now I do that by just moving a, a segment. I use the move tool on a segment. Now here I had a, I ran into a problem where I actually clicked the surface instead of just that line and now I've got a nice little hood on there for, for some extra shade and you can see I've got the shadows turned on and it shows.